Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Hall County Sports Television. I'm your host, Gary Glenn. Well, the Georgia High School Association basketball playoffs continued this week at various sites around the state, but one local team is done with its season, and they ended it with a championship. North Georgia's Christian's girls team won the Independent Christian Schools of Georgia and Alabama 1A state championship, or maybe it's a dual state championship since it's Georgia and Alabama, and with it, they now have two Georgia ICSGA championships in the past three seasons. We welcome to the show now Jenny Brethrick, who is the head coach of the Lady Chargers. And, and Jenny, is, is it a dual state? Do you claim to be the... Sure, we'll, we'll say it <laughs> too. <laughs> well, at least uh, it is this state's version of that. Now, d do you have to go to Alabama to play some of these teams and so forth? We've had uh, one team in Alabama, but we didn't have to go there this year. They had to come to us, um, Ballard Christian. Um, from right outside of uh, Alabama, or oh. inside Alabama. Okay, now let's talk about the tournament where in the semifinals you beat Praise Academy 34-30, and then you beat Cumberland Christian 32-31 for the championship. Coach, a couple of squeakers there. Yes, they uh, they like to keep my blood pressure up and heart racing, so yeah, we uh, we pulled it out. They uh, they came, came from behind. Uh, we had a pretty good lead on both teams, and we just kind of let it slip a little bit too close from my taste. <laughs> I, I kept reading these names. Kayla Goodson with 11 in the semifinals. Uh, Nicole Ball, Julianne Sutton, the, primarily your leaders all year? Yes. Um, any given night, either any of them can score double figures. Um, a few nights we've had uh, two of them score double figures, so that always helped out uh, for us. 13-3 and three overall. So you don't play as many games as the GHSA school? No, not this season we didn't. There are just um, not a, a lot of girls teams in that um, league. Mm -hmm. How would you think you compare? Now, you're, you play in the 1A league, and, and you told me before we turned the cameras on that uh, the three losses were in to teams in a higher classification in the 2A. Correct. How, how would you class 1A in this Christian School Association with, say, some of the GHSA schools? Um, it, there's, a, there's a bit of a difference um, coming from a public school from me coaching and to this to this Christian league. Um, there's, a, there's a big difference. Um, I wouldn't say it was weaker, but you can tell there's a difference as far as skill level. And, and probably the, the, the depth is going to be there too, yes. right? Because how many how many students have you got at North Georgia Christian now, roughly? Um, between 150, 200, I think. Okay, so not a, not a whole not lot a of lot. folks to, to draw from as right. well. Um, how were you? How was what was the makeup of the team this year, as far as your seniors and juniors and sophomores and stuff? We were a very young team. I have um, five juniors, and the rest are sixth through tenth graders. So I I have everybody returning next year. So we're we're looking forward to it. I'll bet you are. I'll bet you are. What when you obviously it's good to end the season with a championship, and I'm sure there was a great celebration on that. Um, what was the thing that though that that you think you're going to take away from this season, other than a title? Um, I think this year we had the best team chemistry. All the girls got along um, on and off the court and just they loved each other on and off. Um, they stuck by each other even when that you know the, cha the state championship game got really intense, really close and they all pulled, pulled it out, stuck together and never gave up on each other. So I think that's probably the main thing. And it, it has to be gratifying to you as a coach to see these girls do that and mature and come together and not fold. I mean, it was a one-point win for the championship. Exactly, yes. Um, yeah, and we were led by our seventh grader. That seventh grader, uh, Julian Sutton, she's phenomenal as far as just pulling the team together and, and just, you know, pushing them to be better players. Well, so in this league you can play six through and up, huh? Yeah, we have to. Okay, I see. So, yeah, uh, just to have enough to enough depth on the – the uh, bench, we have to. Coach, that must uh, that must be something to have to fool with. I mean, there's a there's a vast difference between a, a sixth grader and an eleventh grader as far as the maturity level. There how, is. how do you meld all that together? It's hard. Um, you know, you, you have to take that in consideration for for practices and and games, and realize you know your sixth and seventh graders, you know, you you never you never know how they'll come out in a tough game like that, but. We've had some great girls, young girls, pull it out. Well, apparently so. If it's a seventh grader, get I kept reading Julianne's name all the time. So, once again, uh, you're going to have a bunch of. Uh, 
pretty good senior class next year, and you got to be expecting great things from these girls. Uh, there's no doubt I'm expecting another championship next next season. Well, so. You heard it, folks, right here. Put, <laughs> put the pressure right back on her. All right. Jenny Brethrick, uh, head coach of the Lady Chargers, Thank North you. Georgia Christian. Uh, good luck next year, Jenny. Thank you very okay. much. Turning to other basketball, Lakeview's girls fell to Washington Wilkes, 53-44 in the opening round of the state playoffs in single A. Taylor Handy led the Lady Lions with 16, 12 of them coming on three-pointers. Lakeview's boys were also done after one game, 70-60 to, to Aquinas. Austin Pearson caught fire in the second half and scored his 22 points after the break in that loss. In 4A, Flowery Branch ended their girls' season with 20 wins and 9 losses after a 62-45 loss to the Rome girls. Tavia Sykes had 15 for the Lady Falcons. And in AAA, Gainesville finished at 16-11 after a 64-45 loss to Alatoona. Rebecca Webster had 17 in that loss. All right, let's talk about some local winners now. Chester T's girls advanced into the second round with a 37-33 win over Gilmer. Emily Crane had a big three and some key free throws in the fourth quarter. Megan Kenmer had 10 points, all from the foul line, and went five Five of six in that last period. Dade County slowed down East Hall's senior stars Jazz Jenkins and Morgan Jackson, so freshman Chelsea Dale came through with 26 big points, 18 of those on threes, as the Lady Vikes went into the Sweet 16 with a 57-47 win. Jenkins had a dozen and Jackson 10 in the victory. East Hall's boys just ate up Dade County 90-73. to J.C. Hampton had his season high of 40 points. Hayden Chapman chipped in 16. North Hall's girls and boys teams also both made the Sweet 16. The girls beat Pickens 51-41 behind 18 from Taylor Swazowski. McKenna Rushton had 16 points. The Trojan boys got four players in double figures, led by Preston Smith's 14 and a 62-52 win over Cartersville. Adam Kelly chipped in 11. Olimani Cross and Ebo Smith both had 10 points each. All right, some grad news. Chester T alum Parker Smith had a school record 46 points the other night in a North Florida 75-66 win over Mercer. He hit 11 three-pointers in that game, also a school record, and was named Atlantic Sun Player of the Week. We hit the pool when we return. This program is also brought to you by Long Street Cafe, now with two locations in Gainesville, 1043 Riverside Terrace and 405 Pearl Nicks Parkway. Open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, Monday through Saturday. Long Street's got the reputation for Gainesville's fastest drive through and the best fried chicken you'll ever sink your teeth into, plus veggies, a full salad bar, and great desserts. Check today's menu at www.longstreetcafe.com. Call a friend and meet them for a hearty meal at Long Street Cafe, where they put the home in the cooking. There are moments in life that you wish would last forever. Dreams that really do come true. Treasures worth protecting and a future to prepare for. Turner Wooden Smith is with you every step of the way. Established in the Gainesville area in 1905, Turner Wooden Smith has become Northeast Georgia's largest independent insurance agency by offering professional service at competitive prices. Turner Wooden Smith, ensuring your future since 1905. There are hundreds of options when choosing apparel or promotional items at Jake Iyer Advertising and the Trophy Case. We're all about quality and competitive pricing. Sports items are in stock. Look for special pricing on letterman jackets, corporate apparel, corporate gifts, and custom embroidery. All local high schools should check out the line of spirit wear and trophies. We're also offering custom screen printing available for any team sport. Be on the winning side when you choose Jake Iyer Advertising and the Trophy Case. Locally owned and operated at 250 Dawsonville Highway, Gainesville. Call 770-718-0062 or on the web at jgeyer.com and trophycaseltd.com. Welcome back to the show, everybody. This is Hall County Sports, and I'm Gary Glenn. We're kind of going to continue our state championship theme in this particular segment. And remember last week, we told you all about the, the state wrestling championships they held at Gwinnett Center. Now, and a couple of weeks ago, we told you about Paul Powers of North Hall, the state swimming champion, got a state title in the 50 freestyle, almost had two, came within four-tenths of a second of winning the 100 free as well. 
And we didn't have a chance to talk with Paul at that time, but we've got him on the show now. Paul, thanks for taking time out to come by and, and be with us. You're welcome. Tell me about swimming. What First of all, what attracted you to the sport of swimming, and how did you get involved in it? Um, actually, in fifth grade, I was homeschooled, and I had to have a PE credit for my homeschool class. So I chose swimming as a club sport, and it would count towards my mm -hmm. homeschool credits. And I never really liked homeschooling, so I had a half semester of homeschooling, and then I went back to school, and I never really uh, wanted to stop. It just it was, it was a fun sport. I wasn't that good at it back then, and I don't know. I just kind of enjoyed it. There's a lot of people, and I just kind of stuck with it. Well, it looks like you're built for swimming. Yes, sir. I get long, that long a lot. wingspan, <laughs> long legs. So, huh? So, uh, so you you kind of just took it from a club sport, and then. How did you get involved in, in the Georgia High School Association? Because around here in Hall County, that, that's, it's caught on a little bit more in recent years, but probably at the time you started, there weren't a whole lot of people doing this. No, not a whole lot. Um, actually, that, um, I started swimming in Alabama, and then I moved here for eighth grade. And eighth grade, I heard about the swim team, but I could only swim exhibition right. because eighth I couldn't. Grade. Yeah. So I got up swimming exhibition, just kind of swam through that year. And then last year in ninth grade, I, I joined the swim team and it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't really that popular. Like, people were asking me when I joined the swim team, they're like, I didn't even know you had a swim team. Right, like, exactly. So, just kind of went on from there. Okay. Now, how have you seen it from last year to this year? I mean, it looks like the Hall County Swimming Championships they held a few weeks ago. It turned out to be a pretty big deal, didn't it? Oh, yeah, it was huge. Um, actually, last year there were not a whole lot of people. I'd say maybe like 70, 80 people. And I think this year there were close to almost 200. So all the teams have grown tremendously. Our team almost doubled in size from last year to this year. And its competition has gotten a lot stiffer between last year and even eighth grade well, to this year. This success breeds success. Now, okay, so tell me now about the state meet. And this, this is a, a single A through quad A class. Yes. Okay, so tell me about that. Take me through those, those days in, in the races that you, that you swam. Um, the state meet is definitely, it's, it's really tight, and since Georgia is actually one of the top states for swimming in the U.S., it's a pretty tough competition. Um, you kinda, um, it's actually set up as prelims in the morning and finals at night, and prelims is just qualifying for finals unless it's a long distance meet or event, mm -hmm. and finals, will hel final, finals are held on Saturday while um, prelims are held on Friday. Okay, so this is Georgia Tech now. Now the championship race 2062 in the 50 free and 4591 in the 100 free. That was four tenths off of the gold medal time. So you, you got a gold and a silver medal. Yes, uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it was, it was a it's a good experience. Uh, what did you think when you touched the wall and you looked up and had realized you won a state championship? Well, for the 50, I wasn't, I wasn't really expecting it, but I was hoping to at least get top three. Yeah. Because, actually, the guy who got second, DJ Butte, I'm really good friends with him. So it was kind of like a friendly competition. But the 100, I went in, I was like seated like fifth or sixth in finals, and I, just, I didn't really expect to do anything amazing. And then at the turn on the 50, I looked over, I'm like, wow, I'm keeping up with these guys. I can, <laughs> I can really do something here. Yeah. So when I was, I was finishing my race, I was like, I'm just going to give it all I got. This is what I got to do. So I went in, finished my race, looked up at the scoreboard and said second. I was, I was blown out of my mind. Yeah. I really didn't think I was going to get it. And your brother comes along and beats your, your age group record. Um, actually, my age group record was in long course. Long okay. course is a 50 meter pool. Okay. And he set the 14 under state record in the 14 under short course. 50 short, 25 meter the pool. Yeah. Right? Okay. Okay. This is at Georgia Tech, the state meet. So, um, and you do other sports too, basketball, right? Yes, sir. Any, anything else besides that? that that's and, the, and you're doing this at the same time, though, basketball in the winter and yeah. Actually, winter. that was probably the hardest part was trying to balance a basketball schedule and a football schedule and try and stay involved in church and all that kind of stuff. It's it's a it's a tiring three months. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I would imagine. So you're taking spring off? You're not doing any sports in spring? Um, I'm actually actually spring is one of the peak times for swimming training. Okay. So I've actually just got basically two to three months of nothing but hardcore training until the end of June. Well, you're a sophomore, so you got two more years in high school. Great things look like they're ahead of you, Paul, if you can stay healthy and, and stay after it. What, what's beyond? You hope to swim in college? Uh, yes, sir. Actually, my dreams are to swim at Stanford. That's kind of the oh, yeah. college that I've 
Um, actually, one of my coaches, he was a All-American at Stanford. So kind of want to follow in his footsteps. And, and then see how good you are there, maybe take it to the yeah. next level, the international yes, competition. Sir. All right, great. Paul, pleasure to meet you, son. Pleasure to meet you, too. And, and, and good luck in your swimming. Thank okay. you. All right. We've got baseball coming up when we return. Hi, I'm Rob Bruce. I'm the new pastor here at McEver Road United Methodist Church. And one of the things I've noticed here in Hall County is the number of churches that are here, and that is a great blessing. But it can also be a problem if you're trying to find a new church or you're investigating Christianity for the first time. There's so many churches and it seems like there's so little time. Well, we invite you to be our guest at McEver Road United Methodist. We will not give you a high pressure approach. You can come in, make up your own mind at one of three of our worship services. We have three diverse worship services, one at 830, which is a gospel format service. We have a 10 o'clock service, which is not contemporary, uh, but it's uh, something more edgy and different, and we'd like to invite you to that if that's your style. And then at 11 o'clock, we have a traditional Methodist service. So we'd love for you to come be our cast and uh, come and see. This program is also brought to you by Longstreet Cafe, now with two locations in Gainesville, 1043 Riverside Terrace and 405 Pearl Nicks Parkway. Open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, Monday through Saturday. Longstreet's got the reputation for Gainesville's fastest drive through and the best fried chicken you'll ever sink your teeth into, plus veggies, a full salad bar, and great desserts. Check today's menu at www.longstreetcafe.com. Call a friend and meet them for a hearty meal at Longstreet Cafe, where they put the home in the cooking. Springtime sports are hitting their stride right now. Let's talk about baseball this particular segment. West Hall beat East Hall 15-7 to open the season. Jake Shirley got the win and helped himself out with a 3-for-4 day. He had three runs scored and three RBI, too. Lincoln Stubbs also had three hits, and T.J. Williams was 2-for-4 with three RBI for the Spartans, while Austin Tompkins was 3-out-of-4 for the Vikes. Then the Spartans had it over East Hall all over again, 11-to-1 this time. Zach English and Turk Taylor combined for the win. English also had two hits, two runs scored, and two RBIs. He had a lot of deuces on the day. Cameron Johnson had three hits and three runs, and we dropped by West Hall earlier this week to speak with Spartan coach Pete Allen. Pete, Spartans off to a pretty good start. We are. We're off to a 2-0 and start, beat East Hall twice last week. Pitching was pretty good, hit the ball. Can't be too dissatisfied at this point. Where do you think you're going to be strong this year? Is it going to be hit, pitching, hitting? I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, I'm always too early to tell. Well, we had a pretty good hitting ball team last year, and with most of the kids back, we feel like we ought to be able to hit it a little bit again this year. If the pitching can throw strikes and the defense will be consistent, I think we can compete with most people. But hitting, I would say, would be our strength. Looking around the league, you've probably been – scouting some people, looking at them in the mm -hmm. paper so forth. Who looks like they're going to be tough? Well, just from our subregion alone, we got Gainesville, Oconee County, and Walnut Grove, who all look to be very strong. And then from the north side, you got North Hall, who won over 20 games last year. So it's going to be a battle day in, day out. Who's going to be doing it for you this year? Who are you going to, who are you going to count on for some leadership? Well, the big leader that we have is Jake Shirley, and he's a senior, and this will be his fourth year starting. And he's right now our number one pitcher. Uh, got a number of kids, I think we got seven, who this is their third year playing on the varsity. So we've got a good bit of experience, and they seem to understand what we're trying to do. We'll have to be the road warriors for a while, though, aren't you, Coach? Yeah, we are. Due to a little bit of a quirk in the subregion scheduling and, and some other situations, we're on the road for the next seven games. But then we have nine of 12 at home. Well, that's cool. Who wins your next home game? Our next home game will be March the 16th, which is a Friday evening against Lumpkin County, starting here at 6 o'clock. Excited about the season? Oh, well, baseball season is always wonderful. The change in the weather, the, the springtime, it just kind of gets everybody's blood flowing a little bit. Good luck to the Spartans. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate it. In other baseball, Gainesville's baseball team opened its season with a six-inning mercy rule defeat of Hab Central. Elephants won it 15-5 despite giving up a grand slam. Senior Ryan Griffith got the win in relief and also went two for three with a couple of walks and two RBI, including the one that ended the game. Skylar Weber swung the big bat going two for three with a homer, two RBI, and two runs scored as the Elephants beat West Lawrence 10-zip. 
Hunter Anglin got the two-hit win, striking out five. Ryan Griffith got his 100th career hit in that game. Michael Geddes pitched four innings and struck out five to get a 15-0 win over West Lawrence. He helped his own cause with a triple and homer and finished with four hits and six RBI. North Hall got a complete game and five strikeouts from Preston Graham, who scattered four hits in seven innings in a 2-1 win over North Forsyth in a game which was played at Piedmont College. He also drove in a run. Jesse Strickland was 2-3 for three with a run scored, and Zach Mize had the other RBI. The Trojans then fell to Flower Branch 13-6 as the Branch hit three home runs. C.J. Nevins had a three-run shot while Breck Davidson hit one out with one aboard, and the starting pitcher Chase Holsey also went deep for a solo dinger. The Branch then mercy ruled North Oconee 20 to nothing as Holsey was 2-3 for three with a grand slam and five RBI. Rody Thomas 3-3. Three for three. Johnson got home runs from Chris White, A.J. Benefield, and Jackson Frazier and won a 10-9 slugfest over Cedar Shoals. White was 3-4 for four with a walk and 3 RBI, while Benefield pitched 5 and 3rd innings of relief, striking out 11. Adam White pitched a scoreless 8th for the victory. Riverside played St. Francis in a game which had to be called in the 7th inning with a rare 6-6 tie due to a lack of lights. Looters in the plate were Christian Fares and Tristan Wiggins 2-4. for four. I'm back to wrap it up in just a moment. Hi, I'm Rob Bruce. I'm the pastor here at McEver Road United Methodist Church. And I was thinking this morning about how complicated life is. We have a lot of choices to make in life and not a whole lot of guidelines to do it sometimes. It's like being a parent. You know, I had hoped when I was a parent that our kids would come into the world with uh, their instructions printed on their bottom, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. And parenting is so much guesswork. I'm amazed that we here, so many people talk on TV and we can go into the bookstores and see the books and the folks on TVs that, that have all the answers, but you and I know that they don't have all the answers. And the answers aren't as simple as they tell us sometimes, that all you have to do is smile just right or say this thing or feed your children this and everything will be all right. You know, Jesus gathered with his followers after he was raised from the dead on a mountain in Galilee. And in Matthew 28, it tells us in verse 17 that even then some doubted. And I think that's interesting that the church was formed with some doubt in it. We don't have all the answers. We have some answers, but we don't have all of them. And if you'd like to be part of a community that doesn't have all the answers, but they can help you be at peace with the questions, well, then we invite you to join us at McEver Road. We invite you to come by and visit us at one of our worship services. Won't you come and see? Hall County Sports is brought to you in part by Green Ford on Browns Bridge Road in Gainesville. Check out the latest deals. And remember, when you go green, go Green Ford. By Mountain View Auto Repair, a full-service shop for all of your automotive needs. Call Danny at Mountain View Auto Repair at 770-535-7278. And by McEver Road United Methodist Church. Visit us on McEver Road in Oakwood with three worship services every Sunday morning, Kidstown and adult small groups. McEver Road United Methodist Church is dedicated to transforming the world through the good news of Jesus Christ. Start our wrap up with some soccer highlights. The Flowery Branch girls stayed unbeaten. Cassidy Elrod with a lone goal and Lauren Dunn another shutout and a 1-0 victory over Forsyth Central. The shutouts piled up in a 4-0 branch win over Johnson. Elrod with a goal and two assists and Dunn had nine saves. Dylan Martin had a hat trick and an assist for the North Hall boys in the 6-0 shellacking of Stevens County. Carlos Pranti had his first shutout of the season in goal. Julio Avila had two goals and an assist as East Hall went to 2-0 on the season with the 7-0 trouncing of Jackson County. Gainesville's girls beat Athens Academy as Hartley Carter scored four goals. The Lady Elephants got a couple of goals each from Elizabeth Fisher and Jasmine Pinado, while Liza Carpenter had a goal and three assists. Carter had a hat trick for the Lady Elephants and their 5 nothing win over Stevens County. Carpenter and Fisher added the other goals, and the boys made it a sweep that night, 9 nothing. Douglas Mejia with two goals and two assists, while Nathan Dillard also scored twice for Gainesville. Lakeview's girls shot out Pickens 8-0. Carly Kinney and Amy Gorth scored four goals and an assist each. Goalie Marcel Zavala got that shutout. Riverside got both goals from Ryan Marcano in a 2 nothing shutout of Oglethorpe County. Marcano had two more goals and an assist, and Ricardo Madero got two goals in a 4 nothing shutout of Galloway. Goalkeeper David Clavijo had his second shutout with three saves. 
West Hall swept the Lanier boys and girls by identical 3-1 scores. Tanya Perez scoring twice for the Lady Spartans. Also staying with soccer, Chester T swept White County. Arnold Gomez had two goals and two assists for the War Eagles and a 4-1 win for the boys. And North Hall got both goals from Dylan Martin and a 2-0 win over the Dawson County boys. Wheelchair soccer. The Screaming Eagles are 3-1-2 and 2-0-1 and in the Champions Conference this season. they got a match this coming Saturday on March 3rd at the Mulberry Creek Community Center. Flowery Branch and the public is welcome. In tennis, Gainesville swept Lanier while Johnson swept Jackson County, but was swept themselves by Gainesville next time out, and Flowery Branch swept Tequila. Lacrosse, Riverside varsity lacrosse team kicked off the 2012 season with an 11-4 win. Noah Kennedy had five goals for the Eagles. All right, track and field. Johnson beat Jackson County 50-32. to Multiple wins came from Latavia Cheeks in the long jump, 100 meters, and the 400 and 1600 meter relay teams. Bridget Johnson won the triple jump and the 200 and also ran on both winning relay teams. Jackson Bishop and Grant Laster placed in the All-American Junior Golf Bears Best Atlanta Classic. Jackson was third and Grant wound up in a three-way tie for fourth. All right, time now to name our Athletes of the Week, both from East Hall Basketball this week. For the girls, Chelsea Dale, who stepped up to help the Lady Vikes make the Sweet 16. And for the boys, J.C. Hampton, 40 points and the Viking boys' first round win. Okay, a few other things for you. Bernal swimming coach Blair Bachman was named the Appalachian Swimming Conference Coach of the Year for this past season. When she was hired in 2010, she was the youngest head coach at the time in the country. And she led the program to the highest finish in its history, this time out sixth at the conference championships this year. The Swimming Tigers were on the victory stand eight times. They broke five school and two conference records and recorded 11 personal bests at the meet. Now, speaking of now, congratulations to North Hall's Lindsey Embrick, who signed on with the Golden Tigers to be on the competition cheerleading squad. The Gainesville Hall County Fellowship of Christian Athletes is raffling off a brand new 2011 Dyna Superglide Custom Harley-Davidson Motorcycle. 100% of your donation will support the Gainesville Hall County Fellowship of Christian Athletes Ministry. Each ticket's 100 bucks, but only 250 of them will be sold. The drawing's going to take place at Frazier's Harley-Davidson in Buford on Saturday, June 16th at 10 in the morning, and you do not have to be present to win. The motorcycle was donated anonymously to the FCA in memory of Kurt Lance, Chip Kearns, Ralph Frazier, and Tim White in order to, quote, raise money to allow the gospel to be presented in our schools more often, end quote. Lakeview is offering a variety of camps this summer, including the athletic camps in basketball, baseball, cheerleading, football, soccer, softball, tennis, and volleyball. To register online, you can go to the website at www.lakeviewacademy.com slash events. You can email the athletic department at athletics at lakeviewacademy.com or you can call 770-532-4383, extension 253. All right, our thanks last week for some photos from the state wrestling. Riverside photo was courtesy of Cecil Copeland, the athletic image, the official photographers of the GHSA championships, and the Nick Langford stills after Nick's state championship, courtesy of Bill Lofton at mojophotos.org. West Hall alumnus and current MMA amateur fighter David Sant is fighting this Saturday, March 3rd, at the Tabernacle in Atlanta, Ticketmaster.com, in case you want to go see him. We wish him a whole lot of luck. And finally, the McEver Road United Methodist Men are sponsoring a four-man scramble golf tournament. That's a best ball on Saturday, April 14th at the Mossy Creek Course in Cleveland. If you want to enter, it's only $50. That'll cover all your costs, the cart, the green fees, the goodie bag, even lunch. If you want to sponsor a hole, that's only 50 bucks as well. Prizes to be won includes things like closest to the pin, long drive, plus awards to the first and second place teams. Proceeds will benefit the UMM's community projects. Now, you can call Lloyd Smee, and that's Lloyd Smee at 770-654-6558, or you can email him at l.smee at charter.net. l.smee at charter.net if you have any questions. That's our show for this week. I'm Gary Glenn. Join us next week right here for more Hall County Sports. Uh -huh.